Hi, Ann Cornick from Paint and Porcelain Exchange. And tonight, and I'm going to be talking about jewelry, uh, but primarily rings, because that's what I'm working on right now. So, as you know, um, I have uh, my own website, which is paintandporcelain.com. And those of you that paint a lot might want to consider looking into setting up your own website, because if you're like me, you have a lot of stuff around the house that you've painted. And obviously, you're not going to be able to keep it all, you know. Um, but recently, I also um, found out that a local craft store here was looking for additional vendors. And so I went there and I applied. And now I have a, um, a china cabinet there um, that has all of my china in it, too. And it's it's different than now they have jewelry, but this is different jewelry. And I'm finding that. It, people are very interested in it, so that's another outlet. For this, um, we're going to talk about um, how you go about um, <clears throat> and uh, deciding what is the thing to paint. Now, in our neighborhood, rings and necklaces are huge. Everybody does rings and necklaces. Um, some people will do um, earrings and pins, but they don't sell quite as well. Um, the rings that we have in our, that, that I have, have a, a space like this where a tile can go in. And this is a tile. This is a tiny tile. I'm just going to set it in place so you can see what it looks like. It goes in like that. And then uh, you can paint it. But you paint it before you put it into the ring. Um, all the rings that um, we have for China painting are adjustable. And so this one, for instance, it's the back that opens up that makes it adjustable. I think that's the best kind, but there aren't many of those. Then there's this one, it's a circle, a, a band like this, see, it goes around like that. But then it right here is where it overlaps. Then they have just the regular ones, you know, the kind like this that, um, here, let me get one that's a little easier to see. Oh, this one here, kind like this, where you have it overlapped. So, they're all adjustable rings, and a lot of times people don't want to paint them because they are adjustable rings. They aren't real good rings, is what I'm saying. You know, they're not um, not the kind that um, are gold or silver. They're they're a nice setting, but you know, they're they're not the the most expensive. And you can get them small like this one, or you can get them in the real large like this. Um, so there's a lot of different options. The same thing with the necklaces. You can get the necklaces now. Where can you get them? Okay, you can get them at Dallas, China. And Dallas, China carries everything. So if you bought a necklace at Dallas, you would get the tile. You would get the backing for the tile. And this is a huge one. And actually, this one's even a pin. And it's a necklace. And then you get the chain. Um, they have the chains with their necklaces. Um, and if you go to Maryland, China to buy them, to buy the, your necklace or rings, they don't, they only have tiles. So if you buy a necklace there, you're only going to get a tile. And there are some things you can do with tiles and you can paint them either very modern or very traditional. Now I'm a very traditional person for the most part, but this year I'm going to try the necklace is much more modern than that. There are a number of different backings you can get for your jewelry. You can get these at the uh, like Hobby Lobby or Michael's or Joann's. Uh, one is a disc like this. If you don't have, you know, you don't have the backing on it. And the disc is set up so that you can just glue it on the back of your tile like this. See? And you can paint on the front and it will hang and look nice on you. The other kind is you can use even for much smaller tiles. And it's this one. And this one has a hole for your chain. And this um, also glues on the back. And, and you can glue it on very small things like that. And you can paint them. So. If you don't get the setting for around the tile for a necklace, you can still use the necklace, but you'd have to buy the chain and the piece to attach the chain separately. But they are very expensive. I think 
um, the silver, these come in silver and gold, these little discs. And I, I think they were only like $2 for a bag of them. And the bag, I think, had eight in them. So, you know, it's pretty decent. Okay. So how do I start painting any of the tiles that I have here or anything that's little? Um, I mean, I even have things like this. This is a, a heart, but you can see that that hole is way too small to put a chain through. So I would use, I would use one of these backings on it like this. And then that way I'm all set. Um, I would glue them to a tile. And this is the tile. I have a, a four by four. You can get a six by six. They're the kind you get at the hardware. They're porcelain tiles, like the kind you find in a bathroom. And then you glue to the back of them. Now, you notice I only did two rows on that. I'm going to paint this row this direction, flip it over, and paint this row this direction. And that way I'm not painting over any of the tiles and I, I should get a very good result. So um, this is how I get started. I glue them on with Elmer's glue, but people have said there is a ton of other things you can use. You can use, uh, I've got a list here, floral tape. You can you know make the little loops and then put it on, it'll burn off. Or you can use hot glue or super glue. So, and those will all burn off when you fire them. And so will the Elmer's glue, but you have to wait for it to set up. It takes about a half an hour to an hour. So that's how I get started. Now, this is the first fire that I did last week. It's kind of hard to see it's on the back of a honeycomb tile, but um, you can see I did little, little teeny tiny birds down here. Here's a bird, that's a flower. This will be a bunny eventually. You really can't tell what it is. I just masked it, you know, put in the gray. Um, that's a, a violet. Then we have a rose. And then these two don't have any backgrounds. One's a daffodil and one is a tulip. And those are for the rings. So I'm going to show you how I do my second coat if we have time. And then I'll show you how I start my first coat on these. Um, you need references. If you're going to be working on this, it's a good idea to get good references so that you can work from something in order to do this. And um, this is probably my favorite one right here. I wanted to show it to you, but I'll show you the others as well. Um, this is one that was from Patty or from Pat DeLager in Plymouth, Minnesota, back in one of the old studies. And what I like about this is she did it so you can see. She did it in different sizes. Look at the little teeny one in the middle. That's almost as big as the little ones I'm working on. There's a little heart. She added some birds. A lot of different ideas, a lot of different sizes. And then she showed you here, first, second, and third fire. So I thought that was a really good study to use. Um, and then some of the others that I have, I have this from Dresden. Isn't that pretty? With all the little flowers on it. I have this, which is a button study. And it has things like watering cans, tulips, uh, little bugs, um, a teapot on there. You can see all the different items that they had. Here's one that has onions. I never thought I would want to do onions, but there's onions, the blue there. Um, composition's important, and I, I like this, these three for composition on the medium-sized pins and rings and things or necklaces. Uh, so I, I always keep that one. You can also do fruit. You don't have to just do flowers. You can do fruit. And here are some fruit examples that you could easily um, make small and put on there so that you had uh, a fruit design on there. And then I have just general ones. Here's some that show you how to build up the background first, first, second, and third coat and wipe it out so you can get your daisies from a wipe out. And then um, the other thing I like about this one has a bird on it too. So they have just a number of different ideas. That's kind of how I get started. I find a reference um, I find something to paint from, but I don't draw it. I look at it and just use my paint and paint it. Because with the, with the rings especially, the area is so small that you pretty much don't have much choice where you're going to put things. You're going to put it in the biggest areas there. Now, my eyes are not good, 
And I know a lot of people don't paint jewelry because they say their eyes are bad. There's a number of different ways you can work on these. And this also works for raised paste with gold and doing enameling and all that kind of stuff. So it's not like if you bought this, you would be wasting your money. However, um, here's the one I bought for raised paste for gold. It's, um, it's a magnifying glass, see? And um, it has a light built in here. But when this light comes on, it reflects off my china and makes it very difficult to see. So I don't use the light very much. It comes down and screws into a base and the base is extremely heavy. And that's one thing you want. These cannot be top heavy. If they are, they're not gonna help you at all. They'll just keep falling over. So if you get these with the light, it's great, but the light may cause you more problems than it's worth. So you, if you could try it out at the store or something before you purchase them, I would you know, suggest that. My favorite personally are these glasses that I use. I used to do clock repair and I have this pair and I have another pair that has a double magnifier on each side. And these are just general, but they're really good and I can wear them and they move with my head and I can really get down and see what I'm doing. So I, I think that that's really important too. So um, let's talk about when you finish your project and then we'll get on and I'll show you, you know, what I'm doing as far as finishing these up. Um, when you finish your product project, you do, you do need to um, make sure that you glue it down. And um, the two glues that I use, I use this uh, Gorilla Glue Clear Grip. It's a liquidy kind of thing. It's not real gel, it, but it's, it's not real liquid. I mean, it doesn't just flow. It, it, it's like the typical old kinds of glues. And I just put a couple of drops in the middle and hold it and it will dry, it will dry fairly quickly. Um, you can also put books on it or something like that if you need to, if it's a necklace or something. My favorite though is this. This is Loctite Super Glue. I get this at the hardware and it has these two sides, see the blue on the sides? That when you push them in, it lets the glue come out and it lets the glue come out of the end very evenly and in a very fine stream. So it's not like you're pushing on a, uh, you know, one of those uh, cases that you roll up kind of like tooth, little toothpaste cases. It, you use this and it's very easy to control. You don't get any on your hands and uh, it comes out nice and even and it holds a lot. It holds an awful lot. So I, I would recommend the Loctite Super Glue if you ever get to the store and you want to try it, that, that's a really good one. Loctite also makes glue for glass. And uh, when you're putting a mirror, for example, into a china painted item, you have to use special glass glue if you're using an, um, one of these um, super glues because these super glues dry so fast that they crack the mirror but the glass glue is a little more slow drying and just seems to be a little more liquidy. And for some reason it doesn't, uh, it doesn't break the glass. So just thought I'd pass that on to you. So, okay, I'm gonna get started. Oh, one last thing that I, I realized, I started going through my jewelry today and really trying to see what I had. And I was surprised to find like I had these little scatter pins with the little hearts that I can use for Valentine's Day. And then I had one um, piece that had actually, I had made it into a pin and it's this. I had painted this and I made it into a pin by just putting a pin backing on it. Well, it never sold. And so I came across a ring that matched it, but look at this. It looks fine, it looks fine in the ring. And I really, I like it. I like it with the frame on it, see? But if you put the ring on my finger, the ring is huge. And I mean, I've got really small fingers, but this ring is absolutely gigantic. So I don't think I'm gonna make this into a ring. I could glue it there, but I don't think I'm gonna do that. I think I might make it into a necklace using one of these, uh, like maybe this, this little backing that we talked about and do it, do it like this here like like this and then you, you know you put it down with the chain I think it might look better to do and the other thing I should tell you is I did glue the pen 
pin backing on here and it was real lumpy and bumpy. So I took a file and it's a, a metal file and I just filed down um, a, a flat metal file. You, and when you file, you only file one direction and it, uh, it took the glue not off the back, but it wore it down enough that now I could glue this to something if I wanted or not and the glue wouldn't show and it wouldn't affect gluing it to anything else. So this is what I've done so far. These are the little guys that I worked on so far. You can see them there. Um, tulip, daffodil, rose, and that's my um, violet. Two little birds. That's going to be a sunflower, and this would be a bunny eventually. And I'm going to put on my headset. I'm using uh, a liner, another liner, a size two. I have the two micro micro ones here, and I also have this number two, which is really tiny. So um, I'm using nothing but tiny um, things at this point. I'm going to start with this little guy down here. He's pretty easy to finish off, so I'm going to try to get him done. And he's going to be a sunflower. And all I did was the sunflower on this because the pin that it's going on, I mean, the, the bracelet, the, the ring that it's going on is the tile, super tiny. So for the center, I'm going to take and use my rich brown. And I'm just going to do a little bit at the bottom and the sides here. And then I'm going to take and clean it. And I'm going to go back and get my golden okra. And I'm going to do um, what I had mentioned the other day that I thought I would do, which is I'm taking golden okra and I'm taking a little bit of a brown on it, um, like, uh, like a hair brown or something. And I'm just starting here and I'm going, oops, hang on. A lot of, it's never easy. <laughs> okay, let me get this again. We'll try again. Because I don't want that to be quite so oily. I guess what I should have said was test it on your, um, on your tile. I'm doing this between each one of these. I don't know if you can see. Can you see what I've done there? I'm doing it between the petals to um, help them stand apart from each other a little bit. I'll elongate it so you can see it a little better. And the others are all dry, so it won't matter if I hit them. Okay, and then I'm gonna take my number two, and I'm just gonna put it in the same combination. I'm gonna put it in like a, an okra, or a, maybe a, I have, actually have a sunflower, which is perfect and a little bit of brown on the side. And I've got my eyeglasses on, my um, magnifiers, and I'm just going to pull it around a little bit, like this, out to the edges. Oh, running out. And here, here, and here. Okay, and then I'm going to take my pointed, this is my pointed um, Q-tip. And just wipe back in. I'm not over it, I might know. Okay. Kind of even up that brown that's out on the edges. There we go. I get it over on this side here. There. And there. I'm going to put a little more brown in the middle because I think. Especially if it's a, oops, too much. If it's a uh, sunflower, it needs to have a 
I'm just going to tap it around the center there. Okay. Now I'm just going to double check that. A couple places here. And that's my little sunflower. Can you see it there? Up by the bird. Okay. I'm going to put it back down. Yeah, it's harder. To, you're probably better off seeing it down where it is. <laughs> Okay, and now I'm going to do the same thing working on the little the little uh, tulip above it. I kind of start in the middle and work out. It just seems like it works better. Uh, for the tulip, I'm using carnation and my fine pointer. And I'm looking through my glasses again, and I'm just doing... the color turning it upside down and doing a little bit of color up here. There we go. And now I'm going to do my little leaves. Uh, in this case, I think I'm going to use my pointer. Oops, it's got a lot of green on it, but it's not the color green I want to use. <laughs> I've been painting all day. And I'm going to do the chartreuse, full load, with a side load of, hmm, like a brown green. I'm going to test it on my tile. Yeah, I think that's going to be good. So I'm going to do this. And this, keeping the dark on the right side. And then the ground is, oops. And the ground is green. Okay, and then again, I'm going to take my I never like these pointed things until this, and now I like them because these are the Q-tips. There we go. do a little bit here. I'll just get a little more dark green on that one spot. So you have to take them and work on them now one at a time and see how they work out. So there's the little, that's the little tulip right there. And can you picture that in this? It'll look really cute. Now for the rose, I like the background. It needs a little more dark down here. And you can't see the full leaf, so all you're going to do is suggest it. You're not, you're not really painting real leaves, you're, but you are painting real shadows. Does that make sense? So I'm touching, touching, just touching in the shadow there. Then I'll, oops, I'll touch in the shadow right here. Make sure I hit the stem and touch in a little more. And then I'll look at it from this direction and pull it down a little wherever it needs it. I'm using a number two. And then up here, I'm going to do the same thing. Oops, a little too dark. I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to pull down there, pull down there, make the green a little bit darker. And up at the top, the same thing. Pull down just at the base. That's all I'm doing. Okay. Now I'm going to clean this off. Got my brush clean. And I'm going to go at it now with a red or a Persian or Whatever color you want to use for that uh, for that rose is fine. I originally did it in a flesh color because I kind of like the color of the flesh color. It's not too dark. It's not too light. And all I'm doing is hitting my dark spots. Try not to hit them too dark. And 
and right here in the middle, it's a little too dark. I gotta. Okay. And now I'm gonna use my Pico Pay. Go back over some of those lines and bring them out. Okay. Just keep working at it till you get those lines back the way you want them. There we go. Now, the, this little guy, he's not going to be quite as easy. And actually, it seems like you never find a small enough brush to do any of this with <laughs> when it's this little. I'm going to start with, I like the background, so all I'm going to do is redo the leaf. And that leaf, I'm going to probably do with more of a black green. Because I really want it to have some presence. Oops, here we go. Okay. So I'm going to... Pull it up in here, pull it across here, very gingerly. I'm not, not trying to touch it too much. Hmm, it could use a little brown in there. Yeah, that's just not working. I'm going to put a little brown in. Ooh, he needs to be sanded. Don't forget, jewelry needs to be sanded, too. It always surprises me. I'm using a little American Beauty right now. I kind of like it. It's one of those that goes on very easily. I'm putting a little brown on it now. I'm going to try it this time. Here we go. Come on, come on. Much better. Okay. I wanted uh, black green and a little brown. And this one is under that guy. Can you see the difference as I put the dark? on the yeah you can you can sure see the difference as i put the dark on the the leaf with a little bit of brown it makes a huge difference and then this one up here i'm just going to do it here and maybe down this side and a little on the end there and then the middle of the the thing has a yellow dot so let me get my lemon yellow out here and we'll put the little dot back in. Mm -hmm. Now, another trick I use from time to time is if I feel like it, it needs something, I might try just doing something like this with just the little lines like it's like it's little stems coming out. Just to give it a little more oomph. Let me turn it around so it's facing you. And you can see, I did this one, this one, this one, and this one so far. When you're working on a bigger piece like this, well, first of all, I wanted to show you this one. I think this is cool. This is actually like a cameo, but it's done in bisque. And I didn't know they had that. I thought that was kind of cool. By using a number six on this, because I think I need to use a bigger and I'm just going to do my, my famous rose here. Now, I want to do it with a little more pizzazz. I really don't have a good pink, though. So I am going to do it with reflected light. I put the dark in the center. So that's the dark. And then here's the bowl. Okay. 
I'm just wisping it around because I really don't want to play with it too much and pull this out just a little bit. And then I'm going to put the, put the edges on it. Here we go. One, two, three, and I'm kind of using the side of my brush and pulling towards the center. And see, I've got a big rose there right now. And then I'm going to put another little rose. I think I'm going to use a little pink and put a little rose up above it, up this way here. And have it kind of half half hidden up here. Oh, have to pull it out with the lighter there. Now this one, I'm just going all the way around, pulling it up. Okay, I know you think, what the heck is she doing? You know, I was showing you before how to do all these lovely little leaves and things, and then I thought, well, that's kind of silly because in reality, the, the petals come out when you actually do the cutting. Up until then, you really don't have any petals, so. All right, so I'm going to start, I'm going to use this, um, I love this, this uh, pointy job for these. I think it works perfectly, just perfectly. So I'm going to and I'm just cutting. So you cut from there, bring it this is the point you're aiming for, right there at the bottom. Right there at the bottom. And here it would be right there. That's all your, all your petals come from one spot, and that's where they come from. This guy's going to come in here like that. Okay, and then this guy. get another q-tip I do go through a lot of q-tips this way but okay I need more here okay now let's get a little bit of the so that's what I have so far and I really don't like this here. See that? It's just too dark. I'm going to have to get that out with a brush. Oh, this brush has stuff on it. Hang on. So I'm going to dip the brush in my turpenoid, and then I'll dip it in my... Terp the other turpenoid to try to... I'm trying to pull out these... There. All right, now let's do the, uh, we're going to do the, the leaves around this, and this should be pretty simple. The leaves are going to cut in to the petals, and they'll help define the petals. Oh, too big a brush. No, maybe not. I've always been told I make my leaves too small. So let's try this brush. Uh, okay. dark on here. Now remember how we do this. We do, let me show you. You do one that's halfway across, stop, the other half, and then you would flip out the bottom, but right now you can't because it's right at the bottom. I'm going to put one over here. Bring it right up into the rose. 
that'll help define your rows. Now I'll make some that are a little more obvious up in here. Let's put one here. Now I can make them smaller. We'll do this and this, and we'll do it up in here. I'm using a much smaller brush. Bringing it across, bringing it across, and then coming straight out. I'm going to make a little bit of a place here for like maybe some leaves. I just suggest the leaves, you don't have to make the leaves. See what I do with those? Watch again, I'm gonna do one up here. You just come straight, stop, and then just when it looks enough like a leaf, add a little bit of an edge to it. And we need maybe one or two right here. I'm gonna get some up here. Here we go. Oh, too dark. Come across, come across, flip it, oops. That needs to be a little lighter there. Flip it, there you go. Now if you want, you can take a little of your red and even put in these, and they become really pretty. Watch this. See how pretty that becomes? So there you have a first fire pretty much on a rose. Next time I would take and go, okay, so I'm facing me, but I should be facing you. Next time I would take and go dark here, and I would go darker at the bottom of each of these, a little bit darker down in here. And I think with this one, you might even want to put a background on. You don't have to put a background on. I think it would probably fit this. So let's see. Here's a, this is one of those ugly big ones. So you could either put it in something like this, this is actually too big. So it's too big, so then I would take one of these and put underneath it and get a, like a silver, either in silver or gold, and get a gold chain. And you'd have to darken in here. So you darken here, down here, to set this rose behind that rose. A little bit here, and at the base of each of the leaves. I don't think you need to do a whole lot more than that. And, and I think that would give you pretty much what you're looking for. Okay. Pick up those brushes, keep painting. See you later. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed the program. And I hope you'll take a minute to subscribe so that other people can learn more about China painting and we can get the word out to more people. Uh, you also can look at the links below. Uh, my paintandporcelain.com website has a lot of freebies and printables for uh, new and experienced painters, as well as studies, supplies, and even some of my hand-painted china. So thank you again, and I'll see you next time.